So it seems like we take a pretty systematic approach when making attributions about the behaviour of others and ourselves. But just how accurate are our attributions? Well, when psychologists have compared the types of attributions that people actually make to the attributions that models suggest they should make, perhaps not surprisingly, there are some systematic biases. These biases lead to serious errors about the causes of our own and others' behaviours, so the, the attribution process is perhaps not an entirely rational one. The first one that we will talk about is also possibly the most pervasive one. This is the fundamental attribution error, which Ross described as the tendency to attribute another person's behaviour to his or her own dispositional qualities rather than to the situation that the behaviour is performed in. This is also known as the correspondence bias. It's not quite as fundamental as its name implies though. It seems to be related to the culture that we grow up in, as there is some evidence that it is more prominent in individualistic compared to collectivist cultures. Miller compared the types of attributions made by North Americans, who are from an individualistic culture, to those made by Hindu Indians, who are from a more collectivist culture. The older that the participants were, the greater the difference in the types of attributions they made, with North American participants making more internal, dispositional attributions. The idea is that in individualistic cultures, individual achievement is valued, and so individuals' goals and attributes are more likely to be seen as causal when explaining behaviour. So it seems that we learn to make the fundamental attribution error if we grow up in a culture that values individualistic motivations. A great demonstration of this effect was a study by Jones and Harris in 1967. Jones and Harris had their American participants guess the true attitudes of some students who had been asked to write speeches about Fidel Castro. Now, at the time, Fidel Castro was the leader of communist Cuba, and America and Cuba had been locked in various political and military conflicts, and so it was somewhat counter-normative to have positive attitudes about Fidel Castro for these American participants. Jones and Harris told their participants that the students had written speeches either in support of or against Castro. Further, participants had been told that the student speechwriters had either been given a free choice about which topic they wrote about, pro or anti-Castro, or participants were told that the speechwriters had been assigned a topic, either pro or anti-Castro, to write about. So when we look at the results of the study on this figure, we can see the two choice conditions along the x-axis and larger numbers on the y-axis indicate that participants thought the speechwriter had a more positive attitude towards Fidel Castro. Let's start with the free choice condition first. Here we see that when participants were told that the student speechwriters had chosen to write a speech in favour of Fidel Castro, they guessed that the speechwriter had a more positive attitude to Castro compared to the students who chose to write against Castro. In effect, Participants made an internal attribution, the student speechwriter wrote the speech, because they really believed in the topic. After all, they had a free choice of topics, so this makes perfect sense. Okay, now let's look at the no choice condition, where the student speechwriters did not get to choose which side of the argument they wrote about, either pro or anti Castro. Our participants make the same person attribution. They see those speechwriters writing pro Castro speeches as having more positive attitudes to Castro compared to those speechwriters writing anti Castro speeches, even though they had no choice in the topic they write about. If we were being completely rational, we should not make any inference about the speechwriters' attitudes in the no choice condition, regardless of the topic they wrote about. Essentially, the participants ignored the situational constraints on the speechwriter's behaviour and still made a person attribution. This is the fundamental attribution error in action. So, do we explain our own behaviours in the same way as we explain other people's behaviours? It seems that we don't. The actor-observer bias describes the difference in how we think about our own behaviours compared to the behaviours of others. Jones and Nisbet hypothesise that we tend to attribute our own behaviours to external factors and others' behaviours to internal causes. Now, some people see this bias as being related to the fundamental attribution error, but it is subtly different. The fundamental attribution error explains how people infer dispositional attributions from the behaviour of others. The actor-observer bias, on the other hand, is about what people see as a cause of their own versus others' behaviour. Let's look at a study that tests this idea. 
In this study, participants were asked to rate themselves, their friend, and a TV newsreader on whether they possessed a number of different traits or not. So for each trait, participants could say that the person possessed the trait or that the person possessed the opposite trait. Both of these are dispositional attributions because we would be saying that a person had a certain characteristic. Alternatively, participants could say that the person did not have either trait and that the person's behaviour depended on the situation. This is a situational attribution. When we look at the results of that study, we see the four targets of the ratings on the x-axis and the proportion of dispositional attributions on the y-axis. The higher the numbers, the more dispositional attributions are being made. What we can see is that participants made more dispositional attributions for people they knew less well. The less we know people, the more we say their behaviour reflects their personality. This seems a bit odd. So why do we get this effect? Well, one idea is that we simply have more information about ourselves compared to others. And this means we have more information about how our behaviour varies across targets and situations. If you think back to Kelly's covariation model of attribution, this is distinctiveness and consistency information. And both of these types of information help us make external attributions to either the target or the situation. The second possibility is related to what we focus on when observing behaviour. It's hopefully no surprise that our eyes are in the front of our faces. And this means that when we're observing someone else's behaviour, our visual focus is on them as a person, not the situation they're in. When we're observing our own behaviour, we can't really see our body and our focus is on the situation that we perform the behaviour in. Thus, we are more prone to see the situation as the cause of our behaviour. The actor-observer bias is not quite as simple as we've described. A 2006 meta-analysis by Malley of 173 studies on this effect suggests that the actor-observer bias is only apparent under a number of particular conditions. For example, when the actor and observer are intimates of each other or when trying to explain negative events. When trying to explain positive events, the direction of the effect actually flips over and people explain their own positive behaviour in terms of their disposition to a greater extent than the behaviour of others. This brings us to an interesting question. Do we distort our attributions to look good to others and feel better about ourselves? Let's find out.